Welcome, this is Brian Peterson, Director of Business Intelligence here at Jet Reports. Uh, and in today's session, we are going to discuss uh, how to upgrade the uh, the Jet Data Manager to a newer version. This is uh, obviously a question that uh, that we get asked a lot as people want to upgrade and we release new versions with bigger and better features and better performance and things like that. Um, and uh, so I wanted to record a video that just goes through and, and walks through that process. Um, we do have a KB article on this as well, but sometimes uh, watching is, is easier than, than reading. So uh, as far as everything is concerned, uh, coming in and upgrading the Jet Data Manager uh, is something where uh, th there, there are really only a few steps to it, uh, and, uh, but you want to make sure that you follow all of the, the steps to make sure that everything is, you know, uh, once the, the version is upgraded, that everything is up and running and the services are started and things like that. Now, there are really um, two, uh, two methods to the upgrade, right? There are going to be uh, – there's going to be the first method, which we talk about, which is a, a normal upgrade, which is what most people will go through, which is we're installing a new version of the Jet Data Manager, and uh, we want to make sure that we start our scheduler service as well. And then uh, towards the end, I'll, I'll tack on a few extra steps for if, we if we're using the multiple environment transfer uh, piece of the Jet, uh, Jet Enterprise solution where we actually need to go and start another service uh, to ensure that that's running for, uh, for everything. So uh, with that being said, uh, right now I'm uh, working with version 15.11.2 and we're going to go ahead and upgrade to 15.11.3 here uh, in just a moment. So the first step that we need to do, obviously, is go and get the latest version of the Jet Data Manager and download that. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'll show you that we can go to download.jetreports.com. This is where we can always go and, uh, and download the latest version. It'll take us to this landing page right here, and I can go over to the Jet Enterprise uh, section on the left and just click Download Jet Enterprise. This is going to begin downloading the installation files. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because we don't need to wait for that to finish. But once the installation files are there, you want to go ahead and download those, unzip those, and uh, and just place them on the desktop or wherever you'd like them to live. So uh, here in the Jet Data Manager, this is the existing one that we have. Uh, you'll see here that um, I have an execute some execution packages that I have set up, uh, and also here I have um, uh, some services that are currently started already. So I have this one running the server service for the multiple environment piece, and this one running the scheduler service for the uh, automatic updates to run. So uh, as, as the new version of the Jet Data Manager is installed, there will be new services that we're going to need to start because these are version specific. So I just wanted to come in and point these out here. So let me go ahead and minimize this. Right here on my desktop, there's the existing one. Here's the new version, 15.11.3. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And you see in here that I have my installation file. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click on the setup. Uh, if it, here I have some protection set up about installing programs. I want to go ahead and run this. And this installer is pretty straightforward. This is next, greater the license agreement, typical install, and I'll click install right here. So this is going to go ahead and install the Jet Data Manager on my machine. Fantastic. I can go ahead and click finish here, and I can get rid of this stuff. Don't need that anymore. Now it did actually uh, in, uh, drop a new icon here on my desktop, right? So this is 1511.2. This is the new one, 1511.3. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up this uh, service, new splash screen. And the first time that we open this, it's going to tell me that we need to activate. So uh, here I'm going to, since I'm just upgrading, I already have an activation code. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this as internet. I have a license code. Uh, code. I click continue. And then we're going to go ahead and plug in our license code here. Uh, while I do this, I'm going to drag this off to the screen, uh, paste it in, click send. And then it will tell me that it's going to connect to the server. Take a moment to connect and validate, and then it tells me that the license is activated. Right? This is just letting me know that this is a partner license. And then, uh, it, uh, depending on the name of your project repository, it may tell me that it can't find a project repository. Okay? 
So um, this just means that I need, uh, if you do get this, it means that I need to point it to the proper project repository database. Um, if your project repository is just called project repository, which by default, that's what it looks for, it'll take you directly to the upgrade screen, which we'll see in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click the down arrow under the database section. And it'll give me a list of all the repositories on this particular machine. Many of you will only have one. I, of course, have tons. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and pick my new JDM project repository uh, right here, for example. We'll say that this is the one that I want to upgrade. So I click OK. Uh, right in here, I have my, uh, my upgrade uh, repository screen. And uh, if, if your project repository is, also, is already called uh, just project repository, this is the screen it would have taken you direct, directly to. It tells me the version that I'm coming from, the version that I'm going to, where it lives, and then uh, it will actually take a SQL backup of your existing project repository database before it does anything. So go ahead and click upgrade here. I'm just going to click local files. That'll use the local files that get installed to run the up, uh, upgrade scripts. And voila, I now have the, uh, the project repository uh, itself. Let me move this and resize this onto my screen here. Uh, the project repository itself upgraded. Now, as we saw, if I come back and, uh, and come back to my other Jet Data Manager in here, my old one, I did see that I had a particular service account. If I click on this, uh, this little uh, gears icon to pull up my, my Jet Data Manager services, I have a service account that I'm using to run these things, right? These services right now, and it's uh, jet-int. <clears throat> right, which is not the account that I'm currently logged in as. So uh, one of the things that I will want to do uh, is this. Uh, I do want to come in here and open up the Jet Data Manager as that user one time uh, with the new version. And uh, what the reason for me doing this is that there are some configuration files that get created the first time that we log in as that particular user. And I want to make sure that uh, the, the right repository and everything else, uh, everything else is being pointed to. So to do this, I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and close the Jet Data Manager. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to point to is this. I'm just going to come over. Here I have my PC. And I'm going to go to uh, C, Program Files. Depending on what version of the Jet Data Manager you installed, if it's the 32-bit version, it'll be under x86. If it's the 64-bit version, it'll be under Program Files. I installed just the 32-bit version, Jet Data Manager Server. 1511.3, this is the version that I'm going to run. And again, the, the point of me doing this, I'm going to run this once as that service account user to make sure that all of the necessary configuration files have been created. Uh, and then I can close it and just uh, really just use it as myself. So I'm just going to uh, shift right click. I'll say run as a different user. Uh, here I'll just type in that, user, uh, that service account that I'd created. Type in my password, click OK. And now it's going to actually open and launch the Jet Data Manager as that particular user. And you see here again that it says the repository settings aren't valid. Well, didn't I just get that a minute ago? I did, but that was with my actual user account, right? So this particular user account didn't have any knowledge of which repository it should be using. So uh, in here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, point to my development project, or sorry, my production project, which is this one. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. What that did uh, is that actually came in here. If I look in app data, I'll just show you what this looks like under Jet Data Manager Server. I can come in here for my particular user, all of the different versions, and I can see in here that I have this config file. And if I edit it, stored in here is basically the repository that I'm connecting to, right? So by opening the Jet Data Manager as that, uh, as that service account user, that config file gets created for that particular user, and I know that all of my services are now going to start properly. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do, I can go ahead and close out of this all together, and I'm going to launch this one more time. So I installed the Jet Data Manager. I opened it just as myself. I could have opened it as the service account, but I opened it as myself uh, just so that I could uh, come in and upgrade the repository database, um, which I did. 
And then I logged in as the service account so that all the configuration files got set up. Now, one of the things that I need to do here is this. Uh, I need to come in here and I actually uh, want to come in and I'm gonna come in and uh, open up my Windows services. And you'll see here that right now, the services for this particular version are stopped. There's no username or any of this. So I'm gonna edit this, All right? I'm gonna change this here. I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna go to change username and password. This is where I'm gonna use the account that I want to uh, start this service with. I'll click update and it tells me that those have been updated. I'm gonna right click here. I'm gonna change the start mode to be automatic uh, delayed start. And I'm going to go ahead and right click here and start the service. All right, so that service for the server service is now running. All right, so uh, that's only necessary again if you have multiple environments set up. If you only have one environment, that service isn't going to start, and you don't need to start that particular service. All right. The scheduler service is the one that most people are uh, are going to be uh, concerned about. So right here, change username and password. I type in the username. I click update. I'm also going to set this to run automatic delayed start. I can right click and say start service. And now this service is started as well. So we've gone in, we've installed the new Jet Data Manager, we've upgraded the repository, uh, you, which automatically runs some of those upgrade scripts. And then we've come in here to the services that mainly the scheduler service is, is the one that everybody's going to want to uh, to set up and run. And then if you are using multiple environments, for example, development and production, things like that, where you have the multiple environment transfers set up, um, you'll also need to make sure that the server service is started as well. Uh, if you, uh, once this is all done, I'll come back and show you something else here in just a moment. With regard to the multiple environments, this is the piece that I was referring to um, right up here. So if we have this, uh, if we have this setup where we have the, you know, environment properties and things like that, then, um, then uh, that's where we'll want to have, make sure to have the server services started. So I'll come back in here. Um, if the only thing that we have is one environment, that's pretty much it. We don't really need to do anything else. I will come in here, for example, and go to options, and I'll say filters all versions. Right? This is going to show me all of the Jet Data Manager services that are running on this particular machine. And so for those of you that just have one environment, uh, you can now come in and, um, and take the old version. Right? I would usually come in and just change the start mode to be disabled. Right? for 15.11.2, right click, start mode, disabled, and I'll go ahead and stop these services. So I'll stop that one and stop that one. So that the only ones that are currently running are for the latest version. And now if I want, I could go in and uninstall the Jet Data Manager by just going into uh, you know Tools, Programs, uninstall 15.11.2. Uh, for those of you that are using multiple environments, one more thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we also upgrade the development environment. What I've gone through and done is just the, the production environment, as you can see right down here. So for those of you that just have one environment, you probably don't need to watch the rest of the video. Um, for those of you that have multiple environments, I'll go ahead and just cover that right now, which is, again, a very easy, uh, I can just go to Tools, General Settings, point it to my production, or sorry, point it to my development environment right here, right? Click OK, and it's the same thing. Since these are two different project repository databases, uh, then there, there are two databases, uh, project repositories that need to be upgraded. I come in here, I click Upgrade, I pick Local Files, and what this has now done is this has come in and upgraded both my development environment and my production environment to the latest version. I can come in, open up my project, From time to time, there will be a little pop-up if certain features or things like that have changed, letting me know. You can just click OK to those. Um, and at this point, I have my development environment. This is upgraded to 15.11.32. I can take a look at my services on this particular machine. Both my server and scheduler service are running. The scheduler being the one that controls the regular updates uh, and the server service being the one that, tra that cover, uh, transfers everything from development to production. Now, if I wanted to come in and, uh, and illustrate moving something from development to production, again, I can just come up here. 
I can go to my multiple multiple environment transfer piece, click that, it'll connect to my environments. I have development, I have production, and then I have the software version 1511.3 and 1511.3 down here. So both of my environments have been upgraded to the latest version of the Jet Data Manager. I hope that you found this video useful and we hope to see you again in a future session. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.